So good evening. Thank you for attending the 2018 Interscholastic Unified Tennis State Competition Pre-Competition Webinar. Excuse me, State Invitational Pre-Competition Webinar. Um, on your screen, you'll see some information about the Cool Schools Plunge um, that Special Olympics holds every uh, January. So. Um, Please, um, if you are interested in um, your school participating, contact Jesse Thompson. Um, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see uh, contact information. There we go. Um, there's cool prizes for uh, the more that you fundraise, um, as you can see on your screen. And uh, Special Olympics Maryland um, is going the mile to cover the cost of any school team traveling together on a bus for from their school. So um, if this is something that interests you, if you haven't participated in the past, uh, please check it out. Um, again, thank you for being on our pre-competition uh, briefing. We are recording um, and this will be shared. Um, pardon any background information coming from my side. I'm trying to um, uh, limit that as much as possible, but you might hear some um, toys. <laughs> children's choice. Okay, agenda. So we have, um, I'm going to, I've already welcomed you. We're going to cover introductions. We'll go over logistics of the state uh, meet as far as arrival, departure ceremonies, uniforms, etc. We'll also go over um, competition um, and then we'll take questions at the end. Um, as I introduced myself, sorry, before I started the recording, my name is Allie Rock. I am the Unified Tennis Chair. I've been in this role. Um, this is my what is this, my second year as chair? <laughs> I was uh, the assistant chair the two years previous to that. Um, we also have Mark Sunkel, who um, sometimes you see communications from. He is the Unified Tennis Assistant Chair. Um, <clears throat> also, we'd like to introduce, very excited, um, Kara Marinek, who is the new Special Olympics Maryland Director of Interscholastic Unified Sports. Um, she actually begins her role the day of our state competition. So um, make sure you um, make an effort to come and say hi to Kara while you are um, at the state meet. Um, she will be someone that you'll hear from um, definitely in um, all in the interscholastic unified sports seasons going forward. Okay, um, logistics. So we do want to note, um, please, that there are several school dis systems that are closed on Monday, November 5th and Tuesday, November 6th. So it's really important that you share that information with your teams, parents, and spectators that might be traveling, who might be traveling. Do that early and do that often. Lots and lots of reminders. Um, just stating it once um, is not enough um, usually. But also, um, that also means um, coaches for you, any logistics that you need to hammer out. Um, if your school system is closed um, the first two days of that week, that you uh, make sure you handle all that by Friday, um, as there will be um, quite a mess on Wednesday morning if that's not hammered out. So um, from here, I'm going to bounce over to our event guide, um, just so you can take a look. This has been emailed out um, to all coaches who are advancing. We do have a few um, coaches on the, uh, the, the webinar who um, are potentially advancing. I'll explain that later. Um, so this is for anybody, um, if you are advancing, this should have already been sent to you. It is in the coaches resource Google Drive folder. Um, uh, so we have, um, this event guide is meant for anyone who's attending. Um, so that would be uh, parents and spectators as well as coaches and students. Um, you can take a look at this in depth on your own. I'm just going to cover um, a few salient points um, that need to be emphasized. So on your screen right now, you will see uh, the overview. Um, we are in our 10th year um, of the Sports Equity Act, which established um, the opportunity for unified sports um, in, in all of the high schools. Um, that began with track and field 10 years ago, which we celebrated this past spring. So we are celebrating all year long uh, that 10th anniversary. Um, Unified Tennis actually began a few years after that. But <clears throat> anyway, um, if you don't know by now, our state meet is Wednesday, November 7th. The rain date is Thursday, November 8th. Uh, the location is uh, Loyola, Loyola University's McClure Tennis Center. 
Um, our schedule is as such. Volunteers will check in between 9 and 9.30. Schools arrive. Um, you may begin arriving between 9 and 10.30. Um, try to get there as early as possible so you can get uh, adequate warm-up time. I'll explain that a little bit later. Um, team warm-up will be from 9.30 to 10.45. Um, we will be co closing the courts down at 10.45, um, and no one will be allowed back on to warm up after that. We'll have a coaches meeting at approximately 10.30 a.m. at the control tent. Opening ceremony is 11 a.m., and competition will begin uh, 11.30 um, on the deck or uh, a few minutes early if opening ceremony um, is uh, quite quick. Um, lunch will be available at the same time that competition begins. Uh, coaches is something for you when you get the match schedule to try to um, make sure that you coordinate, make sure that your athletes, um, if they're not in the first round of play, they get their lunches first. Um, and then our award ceremonies um, should begin tentatively uh, by six. Um, and we oh, we have noted in the past few years that this is tentative because um, it's based on the speed of competition. So if competition runs fast, we will uh, move that ceremonies, award ceremonies up. If competition is a little bit slower, we'll move it back. Um, never have we had to move it back, just so you know. We've always kind of finished early. Um, and we are on the pre-competition webinar now, um, so I don't need to go over that. Um, there are driving directions, uh, depending on where you're traveling from in the state. Um, I will leave that to you all to go over as you need to. Um, attached here on page four is the venue map for the McClure Tennis Center um, from above. Um, you'll see where the um, courts, restrooms, and food service will be up here. I'm circling it with my cursor. Um, where parking is. So you'll see that parking is um, quite far down the road. Um, so be prepared to let your bus driver know. In fact, share this event guide with your transportation company so that they can um, adequately prepare, but you'll actually, the teams can get dropped off and then the bus drivers will go and um, uh, park. Um, you'll also note that there's spectator handicap drop off at that same place um, on, um, on the mat. This is an aerial view of the courts. Um, You'll see, sorry, let me uh, zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole map. Um, you'll see that uh, star at the bottom. That's where the drop off uh, is. Um, A, this point A is where lunches and general seating is. Um, there's the control tent will be at point B. Um, there will be more kind of general lunch seating. We also are going to do ceremonies in that area, C and D. Um, and then you'll see at restrooms at E. Um, you'll see that the courts are separated. Courts one through three are right in front of the control tent. Um, courts four, five, and six are behind. And then courts seven and eight are a little bit of a walk behind there. So um, make sure you're aware if you have extra coaching personnel, you know, make note of um, there's a possibility that you'll have to be bouncing um, back and forth quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so we've reviewed the map. Um, okay. Credentialing, um, as has been, uh, stated and reviewed and reviewed and reviewed all non-student athletes, um, traveling with the team. So coaches, members of the travel party, chaperones, paraprofessionals, nurses, anyone who will travel with the team and assist with the functions of the team at the state, uh, tournament will register prior to the event and must be credentialed. Credentials will be issued at, team, at the team delegation check-in upon arrival. Um, so competition areas um, will have limited access. So um, th those credentials are super important. Um, if there are any uh, violations, um, then there's a potential for your coaching credential to be um, pulled. That's violations of competition, just so you know. So we have first offense, warning, second offense. Team will be sanctioned at one team point. Third offense, coach's credential will be revoked. Um, and the coach will have to remain with spectators. Um, so uh, Melissa Kelly, uh, Rachel maddock Cosden, possibly your regional sports directors, have all been um, in touch about your credentialing this last week. Um, but just so so you know this is um, this is sort of what it will look like when you arrive. 
We need anyone who was not on that travel party list who needs to be credentialed must, must, must be turned in by tomorrow at 4 p.m. This is an immovable deadline. It is an unextendable deadline. So um, all of your issues must be resolved by then. Um, I know there was a flurry of emails that Melissa Kelly sent out um, earlier in the week. So make sure that you have um, given attention to those. Also note, please, um, I know it can sometimes be confusing with uh, the chain of, of, of communication. I would like to stress um, that Mark and I cover all things competition. But as far as eligibility paperwork and credentialing, that is handled by Special Olympics staff. So please do not send any Class A volunteer applications to myself or Mark. They will not get to the right people. Um, okay. Um, let me flip back to my event guide. <clears throat> as we mentioned, there will be seating available for team spectators and family members. Um, however, it is fairly limited. So it's a good idea if um, for you to let your spectators know to bring um, uh, seats uh, for, you know, maybe uh, lawn chairs and things like that. Um, all, um, all of Loyola University's uh, um, facilities are smoke and tobacco free, just so you know. Okay. Um, medical personnel will be available. Um, all the medical team will be clearly identified with medical apparel and garments. We also use walkie talkies, so they're always accessible. Um, coaches, you must maintain your own system of risk management, such as um, traveling with student athlete emergency cars, whatever is mandated by your own school system. Um, if anyone, students or athletes otherwise, has a critical or potentially critical medical condition, please notify tournament personnel during team check-in upon arrival. Um, if advanced accommodations are necessary, such as a private changing area or a feeding area, please email Melissa Kelly ASAP and also CC um, whomever is your respective tennis chairperson. So if you are in districts one, two, three, or four, that's Mark Sunkel. If you are in any of the other districts, that is me. Okay. Um, opening ceremony we talked about a little bit. Um, here I would like to uh, let you know that we always like to highlight uh, coaches and student athletes uh, in that opening ceremony. So we have um, the we have roles for um, one coach um, for the coaches oath. And then two roles for student athletes. We do ask that you nominate an athlete unified partner pair. So that would be a doubles team um, to perform these roles. So we have the, the, the athlete oath and the torchbearer role. So if uh, you think that there's someone on your uh, one of your teams to be nominated for one of these, please follow the survey monkey link that's contained in this event guide. Um, for award ceremonies, um, as we said, they'll be presented at the end of the competition. They can be, they can begin anywhere, um, as early as 3.30 and end at, um, between 5 and 6, as we have stated. Um, we do try for teams that have, are traveling very far, like our District 1 participants. Um, if their division, um, concludes early or we can know their place finish very early, we go ahead and make those awards early so they can get back on the road. Um, there will be, lunches will be provided to all registered student athletes, coaches, and volunteers, and then light concessions will be available for purchase using cash, cash and credit card only. Um, and then at the end of competition, we do ask that you fill out this evaluation at the SurveyMonkey link so that we can continually improve our program. Um, I just want to bounce, make sure I'm covering... Yeah, we're not in a competition yet. Sorry, talking to myself. Um, so for weather delays, we will make, if in case of inclement weather, we will make that call as early as humanly possible. Um, if it looks like it's going to be a washout uh, the day before, if it's very clear, we will make the call the day before. Um, you can monitor those um, those announcements at Special Olympics um, website, somd.org, um, on Twitter, on Facebook, by phone. Um, and then also usually your district representatives and school systems also on top of weather announcements. So um, just so you know, that will be made um, no later than 6.30 a.m. on Wednesday, November 7th, if it needs to be that day. But if we know if we know ahead of time, we'll make that call ahead of time. 
Uh, there will be merchandise for purchase. Um, you can look at the details for that in the event guide and go over that later. Um, also provided in the event guide are uh, area restaurants and things like that that are close by to Loyola. So if you're traveling very far and plan on stopping for dinner um, on your way um, to back home, um, there's also a few delivery options available. If you mention Loyola Athletics, um, they'll actually deliver to the courts. Um, so if you want to take that on the road. Um, okay, so now we're going to talk about competition, which is the bulk of our presentation um, today. Um, in this section, we'll go over team score. We're going to go over what's in the event guide, but team scoring, warm up, match schedule, um, any unanticipated occurrences, and uniforming, which we're actually going to talk about uniforming early. This is probably the biggest question that we get when um, before competition and when people arrive. So. Um, all players have to be dressed properly for competition. Please, um, I know that uh, you might do something at the local level that um, your district representatives or whoever is governing your matches uh, might be okay with, but you, you, you must follow these guidelines for the state competition. Um, if a sprinkle, if it's, you know, last year it sprinkled for a couple of minutes at the, the match. So bring rain gear, but it has to be worn as specified in these rules. Um, the same with layers. It is going to be chilly. It has definitely been a chilly fall already. Last year, I believe the state competition was about uh, 48 or 50 degrees. So it is chilly. Make sure that uh, your student athletes are prepared. Um, anyone out of uniform will not be allowed to compete. Um, and that uh, will be a final decision. Um, so the games committee will make every effort to identify and notify coaches of violations um, and take action if necessary prior to a student athlete stepping on the court. Um, we will not actively assist you in correcting the violation. So we will just let you know someone is out of uniform and it needs to be corrected. Um, so, But if in an instance something slips by and somebody competes while wearing an inappropriate uniform, um, we will not implement a retroactive disqualification. Um, however, um, if a student athlete has a second match, they will not be allowed to compete until that violation is, um, is uh, corrected. Um, also, if someone comes up to us and says, hey, this student athlete is out of uniform and they're currently playing, um, we will we will continue to let the student athlete compete if the violation does not impose a health or safety risk. Um, but it must be corrected um, before the student athlete can compete in any subsequent matches. <clears throat> so here are general reminders for proper uniform. Um, of course, the coaches resource guide. Sorry, I meant to mention that at the beginning of this segment. Um, we will be governed by our coaches resource guide um, and um, this uh, the event guide, your district tournament host manuals, anything that's been published to you thus far will govern competition and the rules. Um, uniforms are covered, however, in the coaches resource guide. So bottoms must be shorts, skirts, or athletic pants, like sweatpants, ideally, ideally of a school color, black or white, no jeans of any color. Bottom garments are to be of the same single solid color, no patterns or designs. The below examples are not compliant, and I'll go over those in a little bit bigger um, on the on the slide. Excuse me. Athletic sneakers must be worn, no jewelry. Of course, the exceptions are um, religious or medical jewelry only. Um, no other jewelry. And that means if someone just got their ears pierced, if someone just got their nose ring, they have to take it out. Please, please, please remind your players of this. Um, no covering it up with a Band-Aid is not adequate. Um, uniforms for uh, for headgear, excuse me, um, religious or medical headgear is permissible. Headbands, wristbands, and armbands must be of a solid color. If a solid color, a piece of material may be folded, tied, and used as a headband as long as it's not wider than two inches. When caps are worn, the bill must be uh, worn forward. Any visible undergarments worn under the uniform top or underneath the uniform bottom must be unadorned and of the same single solid color, but not necessarily the same length. Leggings can be transparent above the knee unless covered, or excuse me, cannot be transparent above the knee unless covered by shorts. I'm gonna flip back to my um, slideshow so that you can see. Um, in greater detail. All of the above examples are illegal. So leggings cannot be transparent above the knee 
unless covered by shorts, no patterns, etc. These shorts that are on the bottom of the slide are illegal. They have patterns. They have to be of a solid color. Note that we said ideally they have to be of a school color, black or white. Um, we do know that hardships can happen, um, but no patterns. Thank you. Um, okay, back to our event guide. Team check-in coaches, um, you will send one coach to the control center. When you arrive, you'll receive a delegation packet. It's at that time you'll report any scratches and any subsequent substitutions. Um, note, however, if you scratch an athlete, that, that match is forfeited. You can substitute an athlete, student athlete combination in. The match will be played at exhibition only, but the uh, the the team point or whatever or whatever um, scoring um, arrangement there will be um, forwarded before competition even begins. While you're uh, checking in, um, teams are welcome to warm up or um, set their things down and congregate by the um, lunch or awards tent or in any of the open grassy areas. Team warm up. We did this last year, so any coaches that are uh, returning, this would be this will be a reminder. Um, this is a new procedure. This is something that we're trying to do to make sure that everyone has equal access to the courts um, for adequate warm up. So there will be a significant warm up period of time before competition begins, and then only a brief warm up once they hit the courts for competition. So as we said, um, coaches, you can begin to arrive at nine. Um, as soon as you check in, please, please, please take note of this. As soon as you check in, send one person over to uh, either court two or court six, and a tournament personnel will receive that person and assign them a time to return with the team for warm up. We will do this in 15 minute increments. So if you arrive at 9 a.m., or say you arrive at 8.50, you can have the first court at nine o'clock. Um, you'll have 15 minutes to warm up, or excuse me, 10 minutes to warm up and then a five minute transition period. Um, so say you arrive at 9.30, all the courts are in use, you might be told by the representative, your warm up time will be 10 a.m. So your, your team needs to return to that court at 10 a.m. And the time for warm up, your 10 minutes to warm up will begin at the time that it's assigned, not the time that you actually show up on the court. Um, like I said, there will be a five minute transition period between er, between each um, assigned warm up time. Um, so rosters with three or four doubles teams will be given two courts for warm up. Rosters with five doubles teams will be given three courts. Um, you must provide your own balls for warm up and you must take them off the court at the conclusion of the warm up period. Um, there are no combination teams um, this year, so I won't even cover that point. The courts will close for warm ups at 1045. Um, and just as we said, uh, you'll be responsible for your uh, your your equipment during the warm up time. Um, once competition begins at 11:30 a.m. and your student athletes go to the court in their first match, if it's their first match of the day, they will get a five minute warm up time on the court. Um, any subsequent matches, they'll get about two minutes um, to warm up. Um, scratches, as we said, you'll report those as you check in. The match will be considered exhibition if you substitute a player, uh, but the, the opponent will receive credit for the victory and will be scored 4-0-4-0. Um, staging, the first matches of the day will be scheduled, but all thereafter in the match schedule itself will go, um, will, will be, um, excuse me, will be called first uh, available. So if we schedule matches, um, one through eight, match nine will go on the first court that clears. Um, so back to our slideshow, um, staging announcements will be made to report to one's match. So um, we will not be calling out individual names like these, you know, 15 um, matches and, and each doubles pair and their opponents will say matches nine through 15, please report to the staging area. Um, so coaches, make sure you either let your players know what match numbers they are if you are unable to listen to those announcements intently yourself or um, have uh, a non 
playing student or your assistant coach or a student manager, et cetera. Um, keep a copy of that uh, match schedule and keep tabs on everybody so they can let them know when to get to the staging area. When you report to the staging area, student athletes must be ready to play. So that means with their rackets um, and not having any warm ups on the outside of their uniforms, et cetera. Um, you have to report to the staging area prior to your match. You'll check in with a volunteer there, and then we'll we'll send those in sequence. So once results are received, scores will be posted. Please plan your meals, rest, restroom breaks, et cetera, accordingly, um, according to your match schedule. Um, it, we, if your student athlete misses the second call for his or her match, so if we call matches 9 through 15, someone doesn't arrive, we call them by name, they still don't arrive, they forfeit their match, just so that you know. Um, all, well, we, we will um, provide all reasonable accommodations, but those accommodation requests have to be made um, prior um, to the event if possible, but um, they should be confirmed upon the arrival of um, team check-in in the um, control center. Um, so back to our event guide, pardon me while I, um, flip the script, the slide. So, um, your roster, uh, I sent out confirmations earlier in the week. Um, I've asked that those confirmations be sent no later than this afternoon. So, um, with the exception of Baltimore city, um, rosters are considered final um, right now, and those have to be consistent with your postseason registration that you submitted prior to district tournament. Um, one team scoring, one point is awarded to a team for each victorious doubles match, unless something is noted as exhibition. It may be exhibition for um, the, the match may be exhibition for because one team um, has maxed out their scoring opportunities and they are not scoring. Um, for individual skills competition, the player who earns the highest score will earn one point for his or her team. If the scoring opportunities are not equal within a team division, matches are to be noted as exhibition for specific teams. So these matches are still important um, because it's an opportunity to block um, the scoring team from actually earning their team point. Um, if we implement a time limit, which I'll talk about a little bit later, um, the it will be applied to each match if a match is not complete by the predetermined time limit the winner of the current set will be determined by the team who has won the most number of games in that set if the sets are then equal one one a 10 point tiebreak game will ensue um we'll talk about that later um as far as team scoring ties do happen um if there is a tie with the final team division results um, we'll break the tie according to this criteria. First, the fewest number of sets lost in all matches. Second, if the teams are still tied, the games won in all matches will determine the tie. And then third, if the teams are still tied, the fewest number of games lost in all matches. Um, please note that if a match is exhibition, a match is not to be considered in this tiebreak process. Similarly, if a match is noted as exhibition for a specific team, the tiebreak criteria um, sets lost, games won, games lost are only considered for the non-exhibition team and not considered for the exhibition team. Um, delay of game at the discretion of the tournament director or tournament personnel, we may add additional time to the regulation time allocation if we believe a team is delaying the progress of a match. Confirmation of results. <clears throat> so at through the completion of each match, just to make sure that results are valid, um, a credentialed coach from each of the teams will check the score, settle any doubtful points with the tournament personnel, and sign the scorecard verifying accuracy. Once a signature is rendered, rendered the result is final, regardless of protest. The store scorecard will be retained by the court official and submitted to the tournament personnel. If you do have a protest, um, that has to be filed in a timely manner, um, usually um, immediately. We do not handle protests um, of um, a judgment call, only if you think a rule has been misapplied. Um, so um, I'm going to flip back to my um, screen here um, because I just, um, somebody who stated in the event guide as being on the rules committee actually can't attend. So um, if protests are, um, um, are being handed in, um, the sports rules committee will consist of the following people. So Jason Kamler, who is returning as our head official, he's been with us for um, a, 
a handful of years now. Jason does a great job. Mark Sunkel, our assistant chair, and then either Tanisha Montgomery from Baltimore City or Christine Webster from Cecil County. Um, and then two to be determined coaches and a to be determined student athlete, if possible. Um, we actually haven't had a protest in a couple of years. Um, so hopefully we can um, uh, go forward with that um, or, you know, keep that track record. Um, finishing up with the event guide, just some miscellaneous. Um, courts are going to be kept clear. You may coach from the fenced area during changeovers and warmups. Um, credentials will be issued to each coach for use during the tournament that um, gains you access to um, all the areas where student athletes can go. However, you cannot be on the courts during competition. Coaching is permitted during rest periods between sets and changeovers, except after the first game of each set. Um, etiquette and conduct. Coaches, you're responsible to manage or control any, any appropriate behavior from players, parents, fans, or spectators representing your school system. Um, tennis is a unique sport where unnecessary noise and distractions are not allowed during play. Fans and spectators should remain quiet during play and can cheer and applaud good shots and long rallies, but not unforced errors. Um, coaches should inform players, parents, fans, and spectators what is considered proper tennis etiquette. Parents, fans, and spectators are prohibited from coaching or communicating with players during a match. Abusive behavior directed towards players or officials will not be tolerated. Um, we do have roving officials, as I mentioned, Jason. We also have Tyler Fairley um, returning from last year. We also have various, um, myself as tournament director um, or Mark Sunkel will be, um, you know, serving in an official capacity. So we will be uh, roving around the courts, but generally as is in um, uh, a typical tennis match, uh, the players make their line calls, their judgment calls, um, as far as if balls are in or out. Scorekeepers are not referees; they are scorekeepers, so they will not be um, they will not be telling teams if something is in or out, if something's a fault, et cetera, et cetera. That is up to the players to um, determine. Um, if you think something unfair is happening, and that leads us into our next page about the principle of meaningful involvement. Um, which all coaches should be uh, aware of by now. This um, page is good for spectators and parents to understand um, that um, if you think something unfair is happening, um, what you should do is um, alert the scorekeeper to pause the match until you get a tournament official. Um, everybody will have radios um, who's uh, walking around. The, all of the, our officials will have radios. So someone can be to the court rather quickly. But if you think that the principle of meaningful involvement is um, not being adhered to, if um, a spectator is being abusive or disruptive, um, ask, ask the scorekeeper to pause the match and um, get an official and we will handle that. Um, for a first offense, just a, a verbal warning will be issued. Um, for a second offense, the team in violation will lose a point in the current game. And for a third events, the, uh, offense, the team in violation will forfeit the match completely. And um, so if there's also any coaching violations of such, as I referred in the beginning of the presentation, there will be um, a sequence of uh, warnings and violations issued there as well. Um, so that concludes the event guide. Um, so I want to take a few minutes to talk about competition itself. Um, due to a very unfortunate um, uh, transportation issue with Baltimore City Schools and um, closings two days last week, their district tournament has not concluded. And so because we do not have the results of their district tournament, the team divisions are still a little bit in flux. Um, all of the Baltimore City schools either have a roster of three or a roster of five. So um, I could say when looking at competition and looking at um, the amount of students that Baltimore City um, team will um, most likely compete in division three. That is that is subject to change. I just want everyone to know that just because I stated it on this pre-competition briefing that Baltimore City will be in division three does not mean that <laughs> that is absolutely final. Um, and so I just want to let everybody know there. Um, so you'll see um, that uh, division one is a little bit smaller. That had to do with um, not only the roster size, but also competition. Um, so 
we couldn't, we can't have, um, you know, a team that has um, green ball <laughs> playing in a division with absolutely no green ball competitors. Um, so that is why um, these are set as such. Um, um, so I just want to go over, like I said, the match schedule is not, it's not set. It will look extremely similar to your district tournament match schedule. That's because I make the, the tournament play match schedule. And I also make about, uh, 50% of the match schedules for the state, um, uh, district tournaments, and then also follow the same format that um, some of the other districts use. So there will be approximately 46 to 50 matches. That, again, totally depends on the outcome of the District 4 district tournament, um, which is in the coming days. Um, everyone will be guaranteed one match. Um, in past years, we've guaranteed two matches. Um, we run up against time uh, constraints when we guarantee two. We also, um, it makes it uh, kind of a mess of the scoring, um, recording the scoring opportunities. There, there comes with that a lot of exhibition matches and it's confusing for players, for coaches, for spectators to follow who's non-scoring in this match versus that match, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, over half of the district tournaments this year only offered one scoring opportunity and it worked out, I think, very well. Every And with that, um, there are some doubles teams that might play a second match. Um, no one will play three matches. Um, also, um, as much as possible, all teams will have, well, excuse me, no matter what, all teams will have equal scoring opportunities in their division. One team point per match, unless there's an exhibition, which we explained before. Um, hopefully, once I get the final results of that final district tournament, um, we'll have as few of those exhibition matches as possible. And when I say exhibition, I just want to clarify, um, in that instance, there's one team playing in the exhibition um, uh, role, meaning that their team has already reached their maximum scoring opportunities and they cannot score, but their opponent will be able to earn a team point if they are victorious. Um, there will be no um, straight exhibitions, meaning um, totally non-scoring, um, that are built into the match schedule. Now, if um, teams arrive and scratches are recorded and that creates an entirely exhibition, match that will be played in the same match schedule order but we we just do not have the space or time constraint or time availability to accommodate any exhibitions um, from a roster so um, you are of course always welcome to bring all of the student athletes that are on your postseason registration for the team advancing um, but talk to us please um, if that's your instance um, so that we can make sure that they're credentialed properly, but they will, will, we won't be accommodating that in the match schedule. Um, but also I, you know, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent and explain that if you do bring extra players and you have someone who is scratching, you can substitute that person in, um, you know, this is just for someone who would have been on that roster as exhibition when you played in the district tournament. So, um, that's kind of, that's, kind of how I'm just, we're going to handle exhibitions, but we won't be scheduling those in just, we just don't have the time in this space. Um, because we're giving everyone one match, um, there will be no time limit. Um, most matches finish between 45 and 50 minutes. Um, but because, um, there's about half as many matches, not quite half, um, maybe two thirds as many matches as last year. Um, and we're down two courts. Um, we should be able to get all of competition in, um, by then. But um, in the event of those exhibition for one side matches that I just explained, the non-scoring opportunities will be randomly assigned. Um, so just to go back one slide and show you what I mean, um, you'll see in Division One, Fort Hill and Southern High Schools have four entries. They have four straight um, doubles teams and Easton has five. Um, so a Fort Hill team and a Southern team will have to play a second time um, to um, in order to um, re max out their scoring opportunities. So if for reasons of competition availability, such as like green ball or orange ball um, opportunities, et cetera, um, if we have to um, have Easton play a second match, um, one of their doubles teams, 
but slated non-scoring, if it's more than one, it'll be totally randomly assigned. Um, I, I literally will draw it out of a hat, um, just so you know. Um, and the same, that might happen, um, that might actually um, become necessary as you see in division three, because we might have a team of five in there, a team of three, we're not quite sure yet. Um, if you have any questions about that, we can go over that at the end. Um, and then just some miscellaneous, um, as I talked about earlier, this is our 10th anniversary of the Sports Equity Act. So um, we'll have quite a bit of fanfare at our uh, opening ceremony. And um, we are really excited to host all of you on the 7th at Loyola. For awards, um, listen for announcements and directions regarding the staging area. So, for example, we'll, we'll announce the name of the high school and we'll ask them to report to the award staging number one. Um, players have to be dressed in a way that brings respect and honor to themselves, their team, and their school. So that means they're in a proper uniform, um, in uniform and proper school fitting or proper school fitting outfitting. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm tumbling over my words. So um, perhaps you have uh, warm-ups and you'd like everybody to wear their warm-ups, that it would be considered proper school outfitting. Um, but they ha also have to have proper footwear, so no flip-flops or sip slippers, et cetera, to accept an award. Um, volunteers, day of volunteers, we definitely welcome school-based volunteers. Um, please contact our director of volunteers, Luke Weyerbach. Um, his email is on the screen to register and or attain additional information. Um, please note that student athletes may not volunteer. Thank you in advance for ensuring compliance. If you are running late, please text Melissa Anger at the number on the screen and advise her of your estimated time of arrival. We say text because the morning of competition, we're running around um, setting things up and um, it, Melissa will be handling, you know, delegations arriving. So she may not be able to take a phone call and we may miss your message. So please text um, if you're running late. Um, before departing your bus, after being dropped off, make sure you get your driver's cell phone number. Um, a lot of drivers will say, you know, I actually have to go, you know, especially the ones that are nearby, like Baltimore City, um, they might actually have to go during the day and then come back. So they need to know approximately what time. Um, and as we said, ceremonies, uh, the award ceremonies is tentative um, because it's based on the competition, uh, the, the speed of competition. So make sure you have that cell phone number so you can call or text your driver to let them know if we're ahead of schedule, running behind, or if we're on time. Um, already noted during the review of the event guide that we will have a concession stand available and there's also merchandise that will be available. And as you can see, there is some awesome Play Unified, Live Unified swag that will be available. So make sure your teams know cash or credit cards will be accepted. Um, if you have any questions or concerns regarding this information or anything else pertaining to the state competition, please continue to utilize your primary point of contact as indicated below. So as you'll see, um, for um, most counties, you have a district representative. For uh, District 1, Mark Sunkel is your, prime, is your first primary point, point of contact. Um, for um, everyone else, you have a district representative, you should be utilizing them first. So that means um, please ask your district representative before you fire off an email to myself or um, especially to um, Melissa Kelly um, is as she is a little bit further removed now um, from the competition, et cetera, and she may not answer your question in a timely manner. Um, so I uh, hope that covers everybody's email and cell phone is on the slide. Okay, um, that wasn't quite the um, uh, quickness that I would have liked, 46 minutes. Um, not exactly the slowest, however. I'm just going to check to see if anybody typed in any questions while we were... Nope. Okay. I don't see any questions. So I am going to, and this part always trips me up when I have to unmute people. So I am going to um, unmute anybody. Who, and if you have a question at this time, actually, if you are web-based and you can raise your hand, then I can unmute your line. 
Okay, Tanisha, let me see. Okay, it says that you're self-muted, but you are unmuted by me. So go ahead, Tanisha. Um, good afternoon. Um, I just have a question in terms of I we will in Baltimore City will be in uniforms, mm -hmm. um, but in terms of it being cold or a little rainy, can they wear a sweatshirt on top of their shirt um, once they get cold, or must they have their t-shirt on? Um, I believe in the past, if it is a school issued uh, type of warm up, I believe in the past we've allowed it on the outside. However, we prefer um, it to be layered underneath. But like you said, as rain um, happens. Um, but if Melissa is on the line, she can clarify because sometimes I forget what we've done in the past. Um, as best they can, the jersey should be the outermost layer is what Melissa has answered. Um, so is that, is that good? Yeah. Are there going to be, I know there are restrooms, but, mm -hmm. um, will they have an opportunity to change again? Like if it's cold, um, for them to put their shirt over top of their sweats, um, just, you know, cause of course, sometimes we have kids right. that mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> they'll just be like, okay, let's strip. And I'm like, no, right. <laughs> Um, there will, we actually will not be close enough to, um, any, uh, locker room facilities, but the bathrooms are, um, will be plentiful and, um, and will be pretty big. Um, there's no indoor restrooms. Um, five portable toilets is what Melissa has, um, let me know, but they are the nice, big handicap accessible ones. Okay. Okay. And we'll definitely be finished on Monday. We found an indoor facility great. Um, to host. So we're good. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, great. All right, so if there are any more um, questions, if you can raise your hand. Um, of course, this sort of leaves out anybody who is, um, might be participating by phone. So give me a second and I will attempt to unmute. Hmm. Oh, Michelle Brown. Okay, I'm unmuting you, Michelle. Go ahead. It says you're self-muted though. There you go. Uh oh, having trouble hearing you, Michelle. Okay, um, Michelle, if you're web based and you can type your question in, um, I will attempt to answer it here. Otherwise, um, shoot me an email because I don't know why um, it is not letting you talk. Okay. All right. Um, anyone else? Any other questions? Um, just so um, you know, look for information in a follow-up email um, after this webinar. Um, we'll have information requesting orders for specialty lunches. Um, that would be vegetarian or gluten-free um, as Chick-fil-A is providing the lunch so as you know um they do not have um they're not a vegetarian company but we will make sure we have special orders so um look for that um within the next day or so um and then also we will um we'll cover a couple of other things in that um this was recorded um so you'll have the opportunity to view this um, for anybody who wasn't able to attend um, as well. So um, not seeing any more hands raised. I really appreciate, um, oh wait, let's see. Okay, Michelle's question is, does the undergarment have to be the same color as the uniform or can they wear black or white underneath? Um, the guidelines were just um, that they be solid color underneath the uniform. Um, the preference would be your school color, black, or white, um, but given that um, you know things happen, as long as it's solid color, that's what the undergarment um, can be. Okay, so seeing no other questions or hands raised, I will go ahead and close this out. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, we look forward to a great competition on the 7th. Um, please look for, um, and an e not only that follow-up email from um, us within the next day or so, so excuse me, concerning um, the lunch orders or any other kind of reminders that we forgot to um, 
cover, you know, things come up, we sort of remember things after we sign off. Um, but also prior, look around the 30th um, of the month, so next Tuesday, I will have a draft of the match schedule for you. We'll know by then the results of District 4, and you'll have an opportunity to look at that match schedule. And um, it's always good. Coaches um, often can um, spot things that we might have overlooked because um, I'm looking at, you know, a um, 100 names on a page. Um, so sometimes I might miss a second scoring opportunity inadvertently, things like that. So we will have a draft to you by the 30th for you to view and then um, let us know if you see any mistakes. Um, or any missing information. Um, again, we, you've already confirmed your rosters, and I appreciate that. If you're listening in from Baltimore City, because you're because Tanisha told you to be on, told everybody to be on, just in case, um, we will confirm your roster um, immediately following um, your competition on the 29th. Okay, so thank you so much for being here. I hope you all have a good night and I look forward to seeing everybody next week. Um, have a good week and see you in uh, on the 7th.